Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking an extended look at some of the awesome progress that RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, has made in the past month alone. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at such titles as Kingdom Hearts 1.5, God of War 3 and The Last of Us as well as many, many other games that have drastically improved both in performance and render quality on the emulator. But before we take a look at any of those games, we are going to first and foremost be taking a look at one of the most anticipated games not only to be running on this emulator, but to be running for many people on any emulators ever. Let's now take a look at Metal Gear Solid 4. And no, your eyes are indeed not deceiving you, Metal Gear Solid 4 is now booting on RPCS3. Not only is it booting, but as you can very, very clearly see in the footage on screen, it is also somewhat rendering 3D graphics in the form of old Solid Snake. And to be honest, even though he's not properly rendered, just the fact that this game has, as I said, never ever booted or done anything on this emulator before, and in the changes we've seen this month, at least in this custom build I'm using right here, we are now seeing render graphics, albeit, as you can see on screen, slightly broken render graphics. To show you what the game looks like once it gets to its title menu, we're going to need to fast forward just a little bit. Before we get to the title menu, I also thought this was quite funny. Kept you waiting, huh? Yes, yes, Metal Gear Solid 4, you definitely have. Once you get past all of the ridiculously long splash screens for this game, you are going to be greeted with this. And yes, we have working audio, but if you had blinked at the wrong moment, you would have missed the rendered graphics in the menu. For anybody who did miss it, here is an overlaid screenshot of exactly what was rendered. For anybody familiar with Metal Gear Solid 4 and its intro title screen, this is exactly what you are seeing right now. To give you a better understanding of what it should look like correctly rendered and what it looks like natively on the PS3, let's take a look at some footage from there now. As you can see in the gameplay displayed on screen right now, the still image which RPCS3 has indeed rendered is from the introduction graveyard scene for Metal Gear Solid 4. Unfortunately, at least at this point in time, this is as far as Metal Gear Solid goes. Even though we have correctly rendered audio, we are not able to input any controller inputs and it doesn't progress any further than this. Regardless, now that this game is indeed booting and past that stage of its compatibility, we will hopefully see even more progress and hopefully one day very, very soon we'll have a playable version of Metal Gear Solid 4 on this emulator. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at Kingdom Hearts 1.5, where, thanks to a series of new improvements to the emulator, this game is now not only fully playable, but also fully playable with absolutely perfectly rendered graphics, and now the ability to play back at 60 frames per second. And again, thanks to the previously mentioned improvements, any issues that this game was previously having, especially in the Atlantica Kingdom, are now completely solved, meaning that you can now play this game at any resolution you wish, all of the gameplay captured for this video was done so at 2160p or 4k. When you consider just how light this game is on your computer and the fact that many, many users are going to be able to run this at high resolutions like 4K and at a locked 60 frames per second, this is definitely an absolutely awesome title paired with Kingdom Hearts 2.5 that are now fully playable at high resolutions on this awesome emulator. If any of you guys would like to see me make a guide to show you exactly how you can enable 60 frames per second in Kingdom Hearts 1.5, please let me know down below in the comment section and I will do so absolutely no problem. The setup itself is actually quite simple, it just can get a little confusing if you're not used to how the emulator works. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at God of War 3. Again, in the last month we have seen even more optimizations, but this optimization is actually quite a weird one. The bug itself was found when comparing performance on the same computer between Windows and the Linux operating systems. Many users were finding that they were getting almost double the performance when using Linux over the Windows operating system and this was quite a strange circumstance for the developers of the emulator. 
Now, usually if you store your games on an SSD or a hard disk drive, there is pretty much usually never any visible difference or performance difference between any games running, but in a God of War 3, this was not proving to be the case. And after a lot of hard work and debugging, RPC S3 developer Elad figured out exactly what the issue was and has completely fixed it, now bringing parity in performance between the Linux and the Windows operating system. Now, if you have been storing a God of War 3 on a hard disk drive and wondering why your performance was so bad in the emulator, I would highly, highly advise you to retry this emulator in its latest master versions. To update your emulator version, all you have to do is download the latest version from the RPC S3 website, extract it, and then copy and paste all of the files from that master folder into your own current RPC S3 folder. And again, as always, if you see any kind of beneficial results from doing this, please let me know down in the comments section of this video, or indeed over on the BSOD Gaming Discord. Our next game, Motorstorm Pacific Rift, is a game and genre, I guess, that I haven't covered a bit or, I guess, at all on the channel in the past. However, back in the good old days of the PS3 being one of my main systems, I played literally countless, countless hours of Motorstorm, Motorstorm Pacific Rim, and Motorstorm Apocalypse when they first released on the console. Thanks to optimizations and upgrades again in the past month or two, many of the Motorstorm games are now considered playable on RPC S3. The gameplay footage you're watching right now is of Motorstorm Pacific Rift being run at 4K at absolutely perfect performance levels. Do however be aware that if you want to play this or any of the Motorstorm games, you are going to need to turn on the right color buffers setting within the RPC S3 graphics window. If you do not do that, you will have horribly blown up and overexposed lighting in any and all of your games. So, as I said, please remember to turn that setting on if you're going to be playing any of these games. While Motorstorm Apocalypse is running a lot better and is indeed rendering a lot better thanks to using the right color buffer setting, even considering the fact that it is now running at twice the frame rate it previously was, even at these boosted performance levels, I would have to say that it's still not playable due to its highest frame rate being around 15, 16 or 17 and its average frame rate being around 8 or 9. That still didn't stop me from playing it for 4 hours last night and even though it's running at very poor performance levels, I still absolutely love this game. Hopefully, as we've seen in Motorstorm Pacific Rift, and indeed in the original Motorstorm title, Apocalypse will see further optimizations in future. And yes, even such classic games as Demon Souls have seen improvements in the last month alone on RPC S3. Thanks to graphical optimizations, any and all of the graphical flickering that was present in Demon Souls has now 100% been fixed. As always with Demon Souls and very similarly to the Motorstorm series, you are still required to turn on right color buffers in order to have proper graphical output in this game. The only graphical issue I have noticed in this game in my playthrough for this test was the extremely overexposed light coming from the sun when you directly look at it in the Boletarian Palace. Thankfully they fixed the issue where the sun would shine completely through all surfaces and walls and hopefully with continued optimizations not only to this game but all others we will see this exposure issue completely fixed also. Okay so next up we're going to actually have to use some pictures that were provided by the RPCS3 team in order to show you further graphical optimizations. First up we have a work in progress look at some lighting fixes coming to The Last of Us on RPCS3. In this before picture, you can see that the lighting, shadows, and pretty much all of the graphics in this scene are a little bit too dark, and when transitioning over to these work-in-progress fixes that are going to be coming in the next few days or weeks, you can see just how much of a graphical improvement this has made to The Last of Us. As with Metal Gear Solid 4, The Last of Us is by far one of the most popular titles on the PlayStation 3, and it is definitely one of the most anticipated games to have properly emulated on PC. 
Given the fact that multiple Naughty Dog games, including the Uncharted franchise and The Last of Us, have seen dramatic both performance and stability fixes in the last two to four months, and pairing with that stability and performance upgrades, the fact that developers are now looking at and fixing graphical issues in-game, this definitely bodes well for the future of the emulation of The Last of Us. Next up, we have a brand new LLVM based SPU interpreter and some brand new general SPU improvements. One such title we have been shown is Skate 3, where this brand new LLVM SPU interpreter has, in some cases, boosted performance by 25 to 35 percent. Further to this, we have also been told that in some games like Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3, performance while using this new LLVM based SPU interpreter has gone from around 10 frames per second all the way up to 50 FPS, making it even faster than the previously used SPU ASM JET recompiler. If these user reports are to be believed, these are some seriously massive performance improvements and definitely something that I am going to be testing in my performance overviews in the coming days and weeks. The final thing I'm going to be covering in this video is something that a lot of PS4 legacy users are going to be very, very happy about. RPC S3 now has a native support for a DualShock 3 controllers, as it has had for quite a while for DualShock 4 controllers. Now, unfortunately, at least at this moment in time, this DualShock 3 support is only natively possible on the Windows operating system, but they are planning to expand this support to other operating systems also. So there we have it guys, a quick and concise update on all the happenings with RPC S3, this PlayStation 3 emulator, in the last 3-4 to four weeks. As I've already said guys, if there's anything you want me to cover in respect to this or any other emulators, please just let me know down in the comment below this video, or to be honest, the best way you can let me know is by joining the Discord and asking me over there. Again, at the end of this video, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. If you yourself want to help out with the day-to-day -day running of BSOD Gaming, please, please consider heading over to patreon.com. Absolutely every single pledge and donation is massively appreciated, so if you can help in any way at all, thank you very, very much. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Once again, cheers for checking it out. As always, remember to like it if you liked it dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.